Meet Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote. Forbes magazine estimates his wealth at $25 billion, making him the 23rd richest man in the world with a growing portfolio of investments across Africa. The Nigerian business magnate began with a small trading firm in 1977. Today, his businesses cover everything from cement manufacturing, food processing to freight. Dangote Group employs about 25,000 people in Nigeria. It is building cement factories in 16 African countries and buying mining licenses from Kenya to Zambia. Aliko Dangote has taken on the aura of an economic folk hero for some, turning a loan from his uncle into the most successful business conglomerate in Africa. But to others, he is a villain who's used his political connections to sideline the potential competition. Aliko Dangote talks to Al Jazeera. Aliko Dangote, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you for welcoming us into your home here in Lagos. You're very welcome. Your story, Aliko Dangote, says what is possible about Africa. Tell us about your journey to success. How were you able to turn a loan from your uncle into the most successful business conglomerate on the African continent? You know, I mean, Africa is uh, full of opportunities. And I think what we did was to actually to harness fully the opportunities that uh, you know we met on the ground. I mean, we've done quite a lot in various areas. We started first, you know, with trading. After succeeding with trading, now what we did was to go into manufacturing, which is normally a very difficult area, mm -hmm. especially from this part of the world because of lack of power. Right. Uh, but we've been able to resolve those issues and uh, we're able to uh, you know, succeed in most of what we are doing. We are interested in the man, Aliko Dangote. Tell us about your upbringing, because your story is not really a, uh, of one from rags to riches. You come from a wealthy family in Nigeria. Well, I came from a uh, wealthy, yes, wealthy family. My grandfather was very, well, my great-grandfather from my mother's side was actually uh, very, very wealthy, Alas and the Tata. And then his son, also son of Sidon Tata, whom really raised me up because, you know, I lost my dad at the age of eight. And, uh, you know, so after educating me, you know, you know he uh, gave me a loan of which I was grateful and uh, I paid back in three months, you know, because business was so good. And, you know, I was able to establish myself from the trading to, uh, you know, manufacturing and now to most, a lot of daring, daring things, you know, like right. refinery, the agricultural process that we're doing and uh, also the, uh, you know, uh, fertilizer. Right, right. As you say, you, your business spans a lot of uh, different sectors, cement, flour, salt. Yes. Let me just ask you this. Why commodities in a country like Nigeria where oil... I'm to focus on Dangote Group's growing impact within the Nigerian economy, especially in the oil and gas and building and construction sectors. And joining us now to provide greater insight in that regard is Edwin Devakuma, who is Executive Director, Projects and Portfolio Management at Dangote Group. Mr. Devakuma, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good the morning, morning show. Thank you. Good morning. Very quickly, let's start with uh, the refineries uh, project, the Dangote Refinery Project, built to provide uh, 650,000 uh, liters per day, we're told. And um, we're told that uh, that project will be ready by the end of uh, 2020. And later, the deadline was shifted to early 2021. Okay, this is early 2021. Where are we? How soon will the refinery come on stream? And what are the challenges, if there are any, that you are facing? Well, uh, as you rightly said, this is a 650,000 barrels per day refinery. And it is much larger than the existing capacity within Nigeria. And this is the largest single train refinery in the world. And uh, you talked about the project delivery status. Yes, we had hoped to complete by the end of last year and start the commissioning early this year. But uh, as you know, the impact of the COVID-19 had a major impact on us. Uh, we were uh, uh, receiving goods manufactured in the U.S., Europe, China, and India. And almost all the countries were affected by COVID. So our equipment deliveries got delayed. And because of the movement restrictions, the shipping got delayed. And the uh, construction engineers' movement also got restricted. 
So now we have gone far ahead with the con construction schedule. And by the end of this year, we will have mechanical completion. And we'll start the commissioning by, the, by December this year. So we expect the products to start coming out early next year. And uh, we talked about other challenges. Apart from this particular challenge, we have not faced any major challenges. We were expecting a lot of challenges when we were pre-prepared for it. Though, as you know, this is a major investment. But uh, having uh, gained a lot of experience in construction within Nigeria, we could foresee and plan ahead. One of the, there are some of the things which may look very simple. For example, for construction, you make to need produce concrete for which you need.